Hello and welcome to our video for first year biomedical science students. We will cover the topic of G protein coupled receptor signaling. As the largest superfamily, signaling via GPCRs underpins many physiological processes. Examples of GPCRs include muscarinic acetylcholine receptors and opioid receptors. The endogenous ligands of GPCRs are highly varied and include hormones, neurotransmitters and even photons. Today we will outline the following. GPCR structure, G protein structure and activation, the types of G protein, G protein deactivation and the significance of GPCR signaling. GPCR structure. GPCRs, also known as metabotropic receptors, are membrane bound consisting of seven alpha helical transmembrane domains. The N terminus of these receptors is extracellular, whilst their C terminus is intracellular. Their extracellular domain binds hydrophilic ligands, whilst their intracellular domain couples to a specific heterotrimeric G protein to bring about a cellular response. G protein structure. There are four types of G protein, each consisting of an alpha, beta and gamma subunit. As such, they are termed heterotrimeric. G proteins are named based on the specific alpha subunit they contain, GS, GI, GT or GQ. G protein activation. The alpha subunit of the G protein binds guanine nucleotides. In the inactive state, GDP is bound to the alpha subunit. However, when an agonist binds the GPCR, the receptor acts as an upstream guanine nucleotide exchange factor and GDP is replaced by GTP. Once activated, the G protein dissociates from the receptor and the alpha subunit separates from the beta and gamma subunits. The alpha subunit tends to go on to act on enzymes involved in the production of second messengers and the beta-gamma complex may go on to regulate ion channels. Types of G proteins. There are four types of G protein. GS proteins are stimulatory. The alpha subunit activates adenyl cyclase to form CAMP, which in turn activates protein kinase A. GI proteins are inhibitory. Their activation results in inhibition of adenyl cyclase, decreasing CAMP levels, so decreasing pKa activity. GQ protein activation results in stimulation of phospholipase C. This hydrolyzes phosphatidylinositol 4,5-bisphosphate, forming the products IP3 and diacylglycerol. IP3 then binds calcium channels in the endoplasmic reticulum, increasing calcium concentration levels in the cytoplasm. The final G protein is GT. Its alpha subunit is transducin, located within photoreceptors of the retina. Transducin activates the enzyme CGMP phosphodiesterase, which breaks down CGMP, causing ion channels to close and hyperpolarization to occur. G protein deactivation. Eventually, the intrinsic GTPase activity of the alpha subunit results in the bound GTP becoming hydrolyzed to GDP. When this happens, reassociation of the alpha subunit with the beta gamma complex occurs and the G protein becomes inactive. It can later be reactivated if the GPCR binds another agonist. The significance of GPCR signaling. Signaling via GPCRs is useful since it results in amplification. As long as an agonist remains bound, each receptor can activate multiple G proteins. Alpha subunits and beta-gamma complexes can then each act on different effectors, often leading to production of many second messengers. This amplification is important in phototransduction, for example, because it helps increase our sensitivity to low light levels. Amplification also makes GPCRs useful drug targets, as it means relatively low concentrations of the drug are needed for a sufficient effect to be produced. In summary, 
We've looked at metabotropic GPCRs, which when bound by a variety of ligands can act as guanine nucleotide exchange factors, resulting in activation of the coupled G protein. GPCRs can activate many G proteins from one bound ligand, which leads to signaling amplification in cells. And as you will appreciate, this is useful from both a physiological and pharmacological perspective. Thank you for listening.